stand up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Evangelist, Apostle and pure disciple. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. The psalm of our teacher David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. I sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. Shout joyfully to the Lord. All the earth break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. Then at the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were, sh were shut, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Now when he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, the he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas called to them, if, but Thomas called to them, if you did him as one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails, and put my finger in the prints of the nails, and put my head into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came and Jesus came the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbe unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And I believe, believing, 
You may have life in his name. Father and Son, Thou the Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is known as Thomas Sunday for the obvious reasons that we just heard in the Gospel today. But one of the things that not many people know is actually today one of the lordly feasts. So actually what's happened today is a major event. The fact that our Lord Jesus Christ came specifically for Thomas the second time, because he wasn't with the disciples first time, he came to them and the fact that Thomas declared and said, my Lord and my God, this actually is so important that the church made it one of the, of the lordly feasts. And this is very important for us because whenever we always think of St. Thomas, we think of St. Thomas the doubter. We always attribute that, you know, doubt to him. But what he did today, was something very significant. What he said today was something very significant. Because many people in his situation, the way he responded, my Lord and my God, actually summarizes everything that we need to know about our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's start from the beginning and see what was the circumstances or what was the atmosphere at that time, what was happening. You know, the disciples followed Christ for nearly three and a half years, and they gave up everything and they followed him. All of a sudden, after leaving everything, everything collapsed. He was arrested, died, and buried. And during this week, we're talking only about a one-week period, during this week, they're hearing all these rumors that did he rise, did he not? The tomb is empty. You know, the Marys went and they only saw angel there. The two disciples of Emmaus came and said, we saw him on the road. And, and all, these, all these things happening. So on top of, of you know, everything collapsing in their life, there was confusion. There was also fear for their life now. Because if the people went after Christ, he was the leader, the master. Of course, they are come up after his followers. So they had fear for their own lives. And that's why they were hiding behind closed doors. And they were in fear. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ, when he came, the first thing he said to them, peace be with you. To give them comfort, to give them peace. That he's there, nothing will happen to them. But when it comes to now the, the, what happened with St. Thomas, we see the love and care of our Lord Jesus Christ, the individual service he had. He could have just said, well, Thomas wasn't with them the first time. But he has to believe. He has to figure that out himself. But he appeared to them a second time specifically for Thomas. That's the personal care our Lord Jesus Christ has for each one of us by name. We're not just a number. We're very special to him. He came this time specifically to confirm Thomas, Thomas and Thomas and his faith. That's how valuable we are in God's eyes. He cares about each one of us individually. We are not just a number. We are not one of billions of people in the world but he loves and cares for each one by name. And that's why he came and addressed Thomas by name. He told him, come, Thomas, come and see for yourself. What we see here is uh, St. Gregory, one of the great saints in the church, he said this. He said, seeing does not bring faith. What does that mean? When we see something, when we touch something, when we read something, you know, when we embrace something, that does not bring faith, but it brings knowledge. What does that mean? When I see something, now I know about it. When I read something, now I know about it. But it does not necessarily bring faith. That does not necessarily bring faith. And we have many examples of that. For example, you know, the scribes and Pharisees. How many miracles they actually saw with their own eyes that our Lord Jesus Christ did with different people? Even raising the dead, raising Lazarus. Did that seeing of the miracles, or their perception of the miracles, or hearing about the miracles, or that sensory thing, did that actually make them believe? Did that make them have faith in Christ? No. 
Many miracles happen around us every day. Does that necessarily make people believe? Not necessarily. People saw, how many millions of people saw St. Mary appearing in the church of Zaytun back in the 60s in Egypt? Millions of people, Christians and non-Christians. And there was no doubt that this is a genuine, true miracle of the apparition of St. Mary. Did every person who saw St. Mary become a Christian? No. Why? Because seeing does not bring faith. What does it bring? It brings knowledge. So when I see something, it brings knowledge. So what happened here, people automatically think, well, yeah, of course, St. Thomas has to believe. Not necessarily. He could have just said, instead of saying, my Lord and my God, he could have said, ah, oh, Jesus, that's you. Or he could have said, Rabbi. He could have said, you know, Master. He could have, for him, what he still saw, what he saw in front of him was a man with wounds in his hands and sides. That does not necessarily bring automatically faith. He could have just increased his knowledge and said, oh, now, yes, I know you, you're Christ, you're the master, you're the teacher, rabbi. But the fact that he said, my Lord and my God, now he turned that knowledge into faith. And this is a crucial point. He turned that knowledge from what he saw, which many people will stop at the knowledge, he turned that into faith. Most of us know a lot about Christianity. Many of us memorize Bible verses by heart. Many of us know Psalms by heart. Many people know stories of many saints. But we know more than we can obey. We know more than we can obey. We know many things. But how many of that knowledge is actually translated into faith? How much of that knowledge is translated into actual deeds or actual works? Or into faith that reflects that knowledge. And this is, many of us have that missing link. The link between knowledge and faith. You know, many people have PhDs and master degrees in theology. They know about God, but does that mean they actually believe? It becomes just knowledge. And this is the danger there, that Christianity becomes just knowledge. Accumulation of verses, accumulation of stories, accumulation of history, historical events, it's not. The crucial point here today is our Lord Jesus Christ telling us the importance of faith. Because St. Paul defined faith as what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means that I know about things, but that does not tra translate into faith. I believe in things that I cannot see, Oh, sorry, I know things I do not see, that I see, but I don't actually believe in it. And faith makes me translate or transfer that knowledge into faith. Many things that we see with our physical eyes, and they're different from what they actually are according to our faith. Like, for example, when we enter the church, it's a building, walls with some icons decorated the walls with. We decorate the walls with icons. But what is actually, when we come to church, our faith tells us that this is heaven on earth. As we stand in the holy sanctuary, as if we consider it as if we're standing in heaven. Okay? Once we enter the church, my eyes tell me this is walls and, and you know, icons, but my faith tells me I'm entering heaven now. When I look around and see all these pictures and, and photos of, of, of saints, but these people are alive. And I stand in front of an icon, all I can see is paint and wood, but my faith, my eyes tell me this is paint and wood, but my faith tells me these are living saints. That's why I can talk to them. I can ask for intercession. There's a friendship between me and the saints. There's interactions. Why? How's that, how does that come about? By faith. Knowledge will tell me this is paint and wood, but faith tells me that these are living saints. Knowledge will, will tell me that what's on the altar is bread and wine. That's what it looks like. My senses, my eyes, tells me this is bread and wine. But my faith tells me that this is the true body and the true blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. See the importance of faith? We need to translate our knowledge into faith. Otherwise, our relationship with God, actually there will be no relationship. It will be a matter of knowledge. Christianity will become like another subject that we study. It will become 
another knowledge that we know. And this is very important for us as Christians. For us to have that relationship with Christ, we need to have that faith. Because without faith, everything collapses. Without faith, there's no Christianity. Without faith, our perception of everything around us will be completely different. Even in our everyday life, if you think about it, faith is so important even in our everyday life. How many times do we actually catch a train, for example? Have you seen the driver of the train? Do you know whether he's experienced or she experienced enough to drive a train? Do you know anything about that person? Have you checked their license? But you have faith that you get into the train and the train will take you where we want. You have faith in the driver, even though you haven't seen him, you don't know his name, you don't know anything about him. But you have faith in the driver. Same thing when you get into the plane. You never ask for the qualifications or the license of the pilot. You have faith in them. You have faith in staying in your home under the roof of your home. Do you have faith in the architect and the builder that built this house? Do you know how strong it is? But we have faith. Because if we don't have faith, then our life will collapse. We can't live. We can't survive. If there's no faith, then we cannot actually go on our everyday life. Imagine more important faith in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Without resurrection... There's no Christianity. As St. Paul said it, with no resurrection, then our faith is futile and we still remain in our sins. Because if there's no resurrection, there's no forgiveness of sins, everything collapses. And that's why the devil once always cast doubt on the resurrection, whether that actually happened. Why? Because this is the foundation. And that's why as Christians, we have to have the faith and not be easily to doubt. Not be easily to doubt. You know, me, you know, m- many of us will hear, you know, someone saying, ah, does God really exist? And people start thinking, ah, oh, yeah, does God really exist? And people start doubting. They just hear someone say that. And we're very quick to go and doubt our faith. People will cast doubt on anything that we in the church. And people start doubting. You know, it was very sad to see during the pandemic, people doubted the blood and body of our Lord Jesus Christ. People doubted that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is actually the healer of, healer of diseases. People actually said the blood can transmit diseases. How sad is that? We doubted that the blood of Christ can transmit diseases when we take from the same spoon. That tells us how weak our faith is, that we doubt things like that. Why? It's because we're not strongly firm in the belief. And we sometimes, you know, criticize St. Thomas but at least he declared the glory of God. He says, my Lord and my God. And that was a confirmation of the divinity of Christ. When in front of him, he saw that was Christ as he knew him before. But for him now, he lived that knowledge, translated that knowledge into actually faith. And St. Theophan the recluse actually said that he said, St. Thomas knew exactly what these words mean and they knew that he had to come closer to Christ and declare that he's his Lord and his God because he will get the power of the salvation came from the resurrection. And that's why we have to cling to the resurrection, our power, to give us that faith. If we doubt the faith, ask God, God, I believe, help my unbelief. God, increase my faith. The disciples told Christ that, increase our faith. We pray to God, increase our faith. Not everything we're going to see with our own eyes, as we just described now, because this is the definition of faith. But if I truly have a personal relationship with Christ, I know him individually, I know him personally, then no matter what people say around me, I know for a fact who Christ is. And I can say with St. Thomas today, Christ, you are my Lord and my God. Glory be to God forever. Thomas, my chosen, come unto me to see me.